So this is Module 1, Lecture 2, uh, also recorded on April 17th. So in this particular uh, presentation, I want to provide a usable definition of environmental science, describe the many fields of study that are involved, and demonstrate how competing interests may be interested in, in environmental policies. So again, it's the beginning of the semester. We really we need to know what is environmental science. Uh, one definition from Wikipedia is that it's a multi multidisciplinary academic field. Uh, I'm not going to read all of those disciplines. That's a pretty good list right there, although it's not complete. Uh, and uh, the study of the environment and the solution of, envir uh, to en of environmental problems. So that is kind of complicated. So let's simplify it a bit on the next slide. So environmental science, and this is my personal definition, is an interdisciplinary study of humans, the natural world, and how we interact with our environment. And there are a couple key parts that I like to point out in this definition. It is mine. Uh, I like the interdisciplinary part. We, in environmental science, rely on a lot of different fields of study. On that previous slide, biology, chemistry, geology, but we, it goes further than that. We go into politics, economics, um, government, and governmental policy, laws. There, there's so much to it. We are definitely studying humans. Uh, this course is very much about humans and how we interact with the natural world. So yes, we study nature, but we are studying it in the context of how humans interact with it. Another definition, and this is from... Uh, Essential Environment 5th Edition, it's one of the textbooks that Hack uses for this Biology 103 course uh, throughout all its campuses. Uh, environmental science is the scientific study of how the natural world works, how our, how our environment affects us, and how we affect our environment. So again, we're looking at nature, humans and how we affect nature, and then the reciprocal, how nature affects us. So, a um, couple items here. The environmental science is the study of the resources we use, the living organisms we kill, grow, and utilize, the water we drink, the air we breathe, the pollution we produce, and the energy we use. If you've looked at the course syllabus or the course objectives at all, uh, talking about energy, water, air, pollution, these are all key components of this course. Environmental study studies looks at the interests of many different groups of people. And one of my favorite places in the world, Yellowstone National Park, uh, is a great opportunity for me to talk about fire policy. And um, when studying fire policy, there are two major competing viewpoints. So on one hand, fire is bad, right? Uh, yes, buildings and property are destroyed. Wildlife is killed. Black forest land, that, that the results of the fire, is quite unsightly to many people. People do die. Firefighting costs a lot of money. Uh, there are, of course, many more negatives to forest fire, but forest fire is also good. The fire itself returns nutrients to the soil as everything is burned down to ash. This allows uh, for a renewed... renewed, renewed cycle of birth and growth. Uh, after the fire, usually the very next season, there are beautiful fields of flowers and plants that grow up where there had been a fire previously. Um, many of those small plants, small flowers, and even the ash itself provides valuable resources for wildlife. Uh, some wildlife are actually known to just chew on the ash. It's so nutritious for them. And in uh, the Rocky Mountains and Yellowstone specifically, there's a particular pine tree called the Lodgepole Pine. And its pine cones will only open when there's a fire. And for many years, we prevented fires, and the Lodgepole Pines were not regrowing. We had forests of Lodgepole dying out, but no new Lodgepole Pines coming in. So, um, let's take this all a step further and look at the different groups of people in Yellowstone National Park who are 
have, have a vested interest in fire policy. Uh, tourists, for example, or tourist groups, yeah, they're, if there's a fire, their vacation is ruined, their property might be damaged. Um, but then again, counterpoint, uh, fires themselves draw crowds, and those wildflower fields following the fire, they're going to draw even more crowds by themselves. Um, ranchers have, um, the, the ranchers outside of the park are pretty interested. Uh, as an example, fire drives the bison, uh, aka buffalo, but bison is the technical term. Uh, fire drives those bison from the park off into ranching lands, and there's an well, irrational fear that brucellosis, a, a disease, can be transmitted from bison to cattle. This is actually not true. Biologists are um, constantly conducting research on the park's ecosystems and wildlife, and on one hand, maybe preventing fires would allow them to continue their study undisturbed, but at the same time, preventing fires by their very nature have a negative effect on the environment. These environments require fire. So um, for biologists, it's a kind of a win-some-lose-some win situation. The park rangers themselves, or politicians or other government officials, must manage all the competing interests of all these different groups. And um, one more, insurance companies, they, just like your car insurance company, your homeowners or your renter's insurance company, these insurance companies insure buildings within the park, um, machinery, cars, public vehicles, uh, and the, the lives of firefighters and their equipment, and also all the personal property uh, insurance, all the tourists, their, their auto insurance, and so on. And there are many more. So all these different groups would have some kind of an interest in, in, in fire policy and whether we are allowing fires to happen or not. So just as, as one quick example, does this help clarify the field of environmental studies? Is it what you were expecting? I'm going to guess that this is not quite what you thought this class would be because students often incorrectly think that this is an ecology class. Uh, in that type of a class, we study nature, we study animals, plants, predators, prey, food chains, and so on. But environmental science is so much more than that. So, in summary, yes, it's interdisciplinary. I really think that's an important part of the definition. We study people. And we study how people interact with, use, and benefit from the natural world. Well, that's it for now. I'll see you on the next video.